You're obviously an in-shape guy. Uh, you dress well. You speak well. Have you always been that way? Have you always kind of been like, you know, take good care of yourself and present yourself well to the world? Or did that change somewhere along the way? Yeah, so I've always been into working out. I was an athlete. Yeah. Like, I yeah. played Division One football. Like, we were always going to work out. And I want to be big for the girls, yeah. you know? I mean, well, think sure, about it. You're yeah, yeah, no, no, puberty, no, and you're like, "Hey, what do the girls like? They yeah. like, they like strong, confident, yep. in shape guys." Yeah. So there was that in the beginning, but I got to tell you, on the the style, and even the fitness in a lot of ways, growing up in the South, you get a little, you get a little feedback for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, it's a very growing up in the South is Bible Belt, very be seen, not heard. Yep. Yeah. Humility. Yeah. Like if anybody starts to feel like, I remember there are times where. I'd walk in in a pair of slacks and a button-up shirt, and somebody would be like, why are you dressed up so much? And I'd be like, bro, we're wearing the same outfit, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and, and Because like when you think about style or, or looking like a, a certain – like mm-hmm. if you have your body in a certain shape yeah. and the clothes fit you in a certain way and you look put together, it gives a different appear, mm-hmm. appearance. I always say – there's a man in a blue suit, and then there is a man in a blue suit. And when he walked in, he's wearing that suit. You know, it's the man that makes the suit scream. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, I did get some feedback uh, around my diet in the South. You know, hey boy, why you eat? You know, yeah. Why you eating that salad? Yeah. What is that seaweed? <laughs> yeah. I, I get that. Grits, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> exactly. It, it, well, everything's fried. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Everything in the South. And so I get that. And then, you know, when you start dressing a certain way and carrying yourself a certain way, it's just like, who the hell do you think you are? Yep. Uh, and I had to really get over that to even mm-hmm. go on social media. And I would say that was one of the biggest struggles that I've ever, like, overcome that I can tangibly say when I got over that, my entire life changed, mm-hmm. you know, because I often say suppression is wrapped in love. Mm-hmm. You know, it's those that are close to you a lot of times that are, you know, they might not have taken action in their life in a certain way, and they see you start to do that, and they'll be like, you know, they'll either try to scare you out of it or guilt you or shame you. And um, I dealt with a good bit of that around fitness and fashion and uh-huh. trying to build an online brand, and I'm okay with it now. Like, I get picked on nonstop about my jeans, yeah. <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> and, and it is a struggle, man. I struggle uh-huh. finding jeans that fit right, man. They're mm-hmm. always too tight. You know, because my waist is a 32 and my these big legs and I want to look stylish and I pick stylish, you know, and they're like, you're gay, which is funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny to me that they'll call me gay because normally these are like liberal people that hate me because of my friends. Yep, yep. And I was like, it's funny that you stand up for this. But the first thing that you say to me when you think you're going to hurt yeah. my feelings is you call me gay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, far away. In fact, send your girlfriend to my house. Yeah. I'm safe. <laughs> I'm safe, bro. We'll have a sleepover. Don't worry about me. Yeah, so <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I. I've always I've always really cared about fitness mm-hmm. and the fashion thing is something that I've really acquired and you know I've always tried to do mm-hmm. it but I, I don't think that it really really punched through for me until you know the last few years yeah yeah it's become it's become something I, I really enjoy mm-hmm. where'd confidence come from in you I believe that you know how they say there's introverts and extroverts mm-hmm. I actually kind of don't believe that I think you get dealt a hand in life mm-hmm. and you look at the cards you have to play and you say, okay, I'm going to go this route, and then I'm going to work on myself. And so the more you work on yourself, the more you start to believe that you can achieve certain things. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually where confidence comes from. It's yeah. easy for me to walk in a room and be well-dressed and confident when I've spent all that time working on my business, how I speak, um, my presentation of myself. I think a lot of times you earn confidence. Yeah. You know, of course, there's people that are naturally confident and maybe don't even deserve. I think they call them narcissist. Yeah. You know, Um, but when you've done the things that you know you're supposed to do and you are genuinely confident in yourself and even failing, Mm -hmm. I think being confident is very easy. You know, if I if I were here and I didn't have the construction company, I told you I did or I didn't have those 300 something doors, it would be very hard for me to look you in the eye and be confident and talk about it. It really would. Yeah. yeah. And so I think confidence often comes from the work that you do yep. that allows you to know what your self-worth is and that you should be in a room with certain people and be able to shake their hand and have a conversation with them as a peer, you know, and act like you're big enough for the room because you deserve it because you earned mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That's genuinely what I believe yeah. confidence is. I think it's something that you acquire over time. So what are those guys that are, I mean, what's your advice for unconfident people? I mean, I was in a room recently, there was like 30 dudes in there and I looked around and I was like, 
I'm the only confident person in this room. I literally, because yeah. I, yeah. I was talking about social media and we were talking about making social yeah. media videos. And I was like, there's not a single dude in this room that would feel comfortable right now talking publicly to anybody <clears throat> at all. No yeah. confidence at all. thousand percent. How, what's your advice to those guys? Like you, these, yeah. especially young dudes. Yeah. Go look in the mirror. I, and I mean this quite literally. Mm-hmm. Go look in the mirror, look yourself dead in the eyes and ask, what are you scared of? Mm-hmm. That fear is something that is unknown. That unknown thing is the competence or the work that you're missing. It will literally give you the answer. And then all you have to do is do the work. So for example, let's say I went and looked in the mirror right now and I looked at in my body and how I am, my physical presence. And I'm like, I'm fat. Mm-hmm. And that clearly creates an unknown because I don't know how people are going to you know, look at me. But I know for a fact that if I was in shape, they would treat me differently. Go handle it. Mm-hmm. I want to do a real estate. I want to have a real estate company and buy a bunch of property. Go look in the mirror. Oh, I don't understand debt service, net operating income, cap rates. I don't get it. I don't know how to underwrite. I don't understand due diligence. Property management. I don't get it. I truly don't get it. Cool. Fear. Go put a light on it. Put it competence is nothing more than a light that you put on fear. Yeah. But once you have the competence, you can have the confidence to have a conversation about it. Yeah. And so it's really always going to be work. But I think a lot of people are insecure or not confident and they don't know why. Yeah. It's a fear that you have around a confidence <clears throat> that you didn't build. I and that's okay. That. Forgive yourself, man. Mm-hmm. One of, one of my favorite sayings, and I heard this a while back, and, and it, somebody told me, like, you find your fear. So kind of like what you were yeah, just saying, exactly. shine, your, shine the flashlight on that fear. And when I was just starting out, my, my daughter had some health issues, and I didn't have any money. And so I was worried about, uh, like, literally raising my family with not making any money. And that was my fear. And just like you said, I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, what do I have to do to change this? And so I started, I mean... I. Started so listening to Bigger Pockets podcast, yes. yeah. and and so like I had to learn something else, and then through that I gained competence, and through that I got confidence, yeah. um, and so it was super helpful. And another thing too, um, which I would like to hear your thoughts on this, is there was a part of it where it's you, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. You know, you talked about like calling those business owners and getting that that proposal letter or something like that. When I started doing it, I I faked proof of funds letters to make offers on houses. I didn't have proof of funds. I didn't have any money. I just <laughs> got online and I stole a logo from a bank and I wrote it and oh, said, jeez. This fraud isn't, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Dang it. Too late. Dang it. It's there. It's there. Oh, guys, I, I, I made it through that. Yeah. But, but like <laughs> what, when you were starting out, like how did you have confidence in the, the steel industry when you were a 23 year old starting a business and you had done yeah. nothing? Yeah. So what I did early, especially when I started to do buildings that were much bigger than anything else we'd ever done, I went to people and I had in hand honestly told them it was bigger erectors. And I said, listen, I have a really good shot at this building, but I don't think I can do it alone. Mm-hmm. And so I made the decision to make less money on the job to get the experience and have the training wheels and the backup to not ruin my name, mm-hmm. to learn what I needed to learn and still make some money and be an asset to somebody that had helped me. Yeah. And so that's what I did. I literally, when, when we went from the backyard to major commercial, we did the smaller buildings ourselves, mm-hmm. but you know whether your company can handle that contract or not. Yeah. And so I set up alliances and I asked like three or four people before I even got the job. I was like, mm-hmm. listen, I'm going to start going after some bigger jobs in my market. There's going to be a chance that I win one that's too big for me. And if I do, I don't mind giving you most of the profit for me to get the experience of doing it. Yeah. And so I wouldn't even look at that as an L. Yeah, I may could have made substantially more money, but also could have lost a bunch of money and worse ruined my reputation. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to faking it till you make it, I don't know if I necessarily did that, but I did take credit for the job and I put my sign up front. Yeah. yeah. You know? So it was it was kind of a culmination of those things that really mm-hmm. helped me when we were growing in construction. And I would do the same thing mm-hmm. in real estate today. If I was looking at a deal because I have a lot of people send me deals, even unsolicited, like people that follow me, like people that really, you know, like my content, they'll send me stuff. If I ever looked at one that I thought was too big, I would probably call you or Ken. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I'd be like, you know what, Brandon, this is where I am. You know, I'd like to have a part of the deal, but had being hat in hand, honest with people and having the humility to do that. Someone that's been doing it longer than you, that you Mm -hmm. admire, that you trust. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And yeah. in fact, I think some of the strongest men in the world can do that, yeah, that yeah. very thing. Come to somebody that knows more than them, 
tell them that you're uncertain, but you want to do a good job and you don't mind if they make most of the money, but help me through this because I want to be like you one day. Yeah. I love how that's the opposite of, uh, or so different from going to a, some, that, that person first and be like, Hey, I really want to get into big deals. Will you just mentor me and teach me everything you know? That gets like, can, can I, yeah, can I, can I pick your brain <laughs> today? Go to your, coffee. Can I ask like, you a question? Yeah. Can I ask you a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead you're like, like, Hey, I'm going to get some big deal. Mm-hmm. You're going to make a bunch of money. If this happens, yeah. if that happens, can I rely on you? Like, yeah. What and a that, different approach. And yeah. that's another thing I, I would like, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur today. Mm-hmm. I read something one time that said most millionaires are employees. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And so the way I look at if I were if I were an employee tomorrow and I wanted to make more money, instead of walking into the office and asking my boss to give me a raise based off the same job I was doing yesterday for less money, then I'm an arrogant asshole. Yeah. yeah. If I wanted a raise, I'd walk in and say, Hey, I noticed this, this, and this about the business. I want to grow the business. And I would like this little part in return. Yeah. You know? And um, I've told my own employees that. Yeah. They're like, do you want to make, they're like, you know, hey, boss, I want to raise. Cool. Why don't you help me make some more money? Yeah. 